Hi, welcome uh, to my presentation on the League Communication and the CMSC. Um, quick overview to the socket. Uh, the Golden Age, that's to quote John Moore from Taylor House Cyberspace in 1992. The Golden Age of Cyberspace is drawing to a close, but the Golden Age for Warriors is just dawning. Which is in reference to the dawn break of the CMC usage, which has now been realised more since from well over a decade ago. Cyberspace, which from Lucid defines the internet, the World Wide Web and everything else in it in between, isn't going by the national and international boundaries, or the law, uh, is still behind the times it seems, which is where a whole host of legal issues arise, with particular reference to both fraud and cyber squatting when it comes to CMC. Although it isn't without notice that liability claims, or cyber libel, are rife enough even still. All this, of course, without having had this protection laws enacted to protect the individual, which without would ensure that the legal strangle surrounding CMC would swell furthermore and in greater numbers than it is currently. In my opinion, the three great areas of concern comes to the legalities within current CMC usage would be fraud, liabilities and size growing. But due to time constraints for the presentation and for the purpose of it, I'm going to concentrate on just one of the main areas mentioned, which in this case would be fraud, uh, <coughs> which can definitely seen as a public issue. One that affects both the highly high and mighty comp corporation, but more so the small time user, the job of society, if you will, with the identity theft and deception being two of the more commonly known means of fraud instigated amongst the community through the use of CMC. The definition of fraud, therefore, could be intentionally misleading or deceiving another individual or group to attain something to one's own benefit, or an intentional perversion of truth, deceitful practice, or device resorted to <coughs> with intent to deprive another property or another right. In terms of the and computer-mediated communication usage, this can encompass many things, more specifically, specifically identity theft, the sale of items or property without ascertained rights to do so, or monetary-based fraud. There are all examples of fraud activities that take place through the pursuing or CMC usage. For instance, one example of that would be the Nigerian email scam. Typically, this kind of scam, or fraud if you will, can be defined as being a wealthy foreigner who needs help moving millions of dollars from his homeland to promise a hefty percentage of the fortune of the reward for assisting him or her. Basically, it's based upon a please help me type of plea with a I will reward you undertones. Uh, this kind of scam or fraud is sometimes decreed at cyberspace by a long shot. First known and recorded case of this kind of fraud and act going on dates back to 1920 and it was referred to as the Spanish prisoner gun. Using the same concept of we will give you this much more for giving us this little. Uh, there's also variants in the style of fraud, no more so than the form of a foreign lottery win. Again, somehow requires forking out facilitation fees of one sort or another in order to claim their winnings, that they of course never will be, will be likely to ever receive. Albeit that the level proportion of people attempting this sort of fraud and acts on the decrease, there's still other examples of fraud attempts to use the CMC that leave persons open to being exploited. <coughs> a current example, therefore, would be the more recent debate over the fusion from eBay, to remove the free one big weekend tickets from its site in order to prevent people from cashing on the distribution lottery from which the tickets were distributed, therefore showing that the use of CMC, in this case the eBay auctions, had been compromised. Not in, and not only was the act morally and ethically fraudulent anyway, but the actual condoning the sales tickets meant that eBay also, and I quote, permitting people to engage in fraudulent activity by supplying and using ID to pass themselves off for someone else in order to gain entry to the big weekend. So, therefore, identity theft, something which eBay and a second known PayPal are known for assisting with due to proving low levels of cyber security, usually, and for it could also be an issue in this instance. Um, not only that, but as eBay will allow the sales to continue, despite the BBC's regulation on the tickets, then it could possibly also mean that eBay would be deemed worthy of liable action due to the apparent acknowledged awareness of possible fraud incitement, and therefore the assistance of these fraudulent acts. A further current example, much more recently, would be the debate over the exact nature, extent and content of which the information used and provided on seats such as Facebook is achieved and leading to attempts at identity theft but also deception through fraud with more sinister means. In more particular terms, social networking sites do have some dangers if people don't handle the information properly. There is information there which has not been proven that fraud be used to actually steal your identity, not necessarily on the internet but in other areas. This is of course down to an individual case by case basis and can depend on more on depend on the control or restraints of the user in the zero or in certain details published online. But all in all, it's possible the case of identity theft or fraud can again come about as a result of these actions. Furthermore to this, there's always been cause for concern of certain US government officials or the possible misuse and representation of fraudulent activity through deception of individuals in order to gain from or attempt illegal acts of food affiliate through the use of Facebook as means of a CMC based tool. Uh, which therefore shows that in this instance there is a provided cause for legal issues being raised. 
in terms of legal remedies or laws, uh, this kind of legal issue regarding communities and technology usage, there's a wide variety of justice systems and laws already passed, led to various types of fraud and activity that also go back on taken outside of serious use, which can vary from heft to finance actions to length of jail terms and those sorts of recommendations. Therefore, no special, specific sanctions passed for regulating fraud and outsourcing in usage at present. So, in summary, uh, the use of computer-mediated communication, or CMC, can lead to all sorts of legal minefields, depending on how you tread, be it libel, fraud, <coughs> or cyber squatting. The chance of being targeted one of these is ever present, but so long as you go about your business the right way, there shouldn't be cause of concern. These areas also raise up possible ethical and moral issues along with it, but again, these can be voiced so long as the correct priority and sensible assumptions and uses are applied. In this presentation, there have been a small, num- just small number of possible scenarios which could lead to any one of these legalities being portrayed, but the whole fossil of possibilities could be used to exploit personal vulnerability, vulnerability targeting for fraud, libel, and the like. For more information on any of the research areas in this presentation, please refer to the reference links and documentation, which can be found by following the web link on screen. Thank you very much, that's the end of the presentation.